Russia just went to war and you're about to lose some money. Keep watching. So this whole year we've been in pandemonium, right? No pun intended. We're just getting over that pandemic. It's still around. It's still affecting the economy. We've got supply chain issues. We had the great resignation and the great inflation going on. You know, inflation's just crazy right now, above 7%. And I think I've mentioned to you before, the only time in history that we've gone above 5% and not gone into a recession was 1951, and that was the Korean War. Now we've got another war situation going on, and inflation's only going to get higher. So chances are we're headed for a great recession session as well. So we got supply chain issues all over the place. Docks are affected. Dock workers are affected. We can't get shipments all over the country. Just go to any store in the U.S. and you'll see the shelves kind of empty. They did a survey of the top 150 companies and a couple years ago they had about 40 days of supplies to get their stuff done. Right now, in December of 2021, they were down to five days of supplies. Now, if you don't think that prices are going to rise because supplies are lower, then that's the basic case in economy. If the supplies are low, demand is high, prices get naturally pushed up. And we know there's crazy amount, 82% more expensive to buy a car, 35% more expensive to buy a used car, 50% increase in prices of fuel and utilities. It is madness out there what's going on right now. And it just got a lot worse. So make matters worse, the S&P 500, the largest companies, we're seeing a decrease in and stock prices and it's going down and the feds are also at the same time threatening to increase the interest rate of all things which will further cause chaos and all kinds of problems in the way we spend money and behave so commodities are sky high oil is over a hundred dollars a barrel and it hasn't been that kind of prices in a while so crude oil and other commodities are skyrocketing bitcoin and all of these other things are going on right now we've seen a decrease in prices and those as well so let's talk about you Ukraine and Russia right now so we could put things into perspective and talk about how the effect is there. See, a lot of people think that when a country is far away, they've got chaos and war and famine and all kinds of things going on, that it's not going to affect us. Well, the pandemic proved that to be completely wrong because what goes on around the world does indeed affect us. The world is a smaller place. So a little bit about Ukraine. Ukraine was part of the former Soviet Union, obviously, as was Russia. And because they were part of the former Soviet Union, Union, they had alliances that were already there, but they tried to establish new alliances. So back in 1991, when Ukraine got its independence, so to speak, when the Soviet Union broke apart, they still had an alliance with Russia for military. So they had kind of a partnership with the Russian military, but they also tried to forge partnerships with the European Union and NATO. And if you're not familiar with what NATO is, by the way, NATO is a group of about 30 countries, the North Atlantic Treaty or organization. So basically it says, hey, we're family members of 30 or so countries, which the United States is a part of. And if any one of us is attacked, there's a certain set of things we're going to do. So because Ukraine was also trying to play nice, nice with NATO at the same time, obviously Russia didn't like that. And that led to some problems. In 2013 in particular, the Ukrainian president at the time decided to go more pro-Russia and kind of break away from the European Union. And that caused caused a lot of riots to take place in the country. It was called the Euro Maiden protest, and that was a lot of upheaval, kind of giving Russia a green light to kind of move in to help secure things. They ended up annexing Crimea, which was predominantly a Russian ethnic population anyway. All this has kind of led to a lot of posturing from a lot of different countries. The European Union has put sanctions on Russia. The United States has stopped, you know, some of the banking that Russian banks and investments they had in this country in the United States as well as abroad, and England has also put in their own sanctions. You might be thinking how this all ties in. What is Putin? What is Ukraine? What, what does all this got to do with me and my money? Let me explain. If you think that what goes on somewhere else can't tie into our stock market, let me explain. 90% of all the semiconductors that we use in computers that comes to the United States is made in the Ukraine. We already have a supply chain issue, right? Palladium, which is one of the four precious metals 
metals that are used in a lot of computer components. I like to call palladium the Prius metal. You remember all of those Priuses around the country that were getting broken into and people were stealing the catalytic converter? Well, that's the precious metal inside. 35% of that palladium is mined in those parts of the world. And that's going to affect our stock market as well because that goes into a lot of fuel cells. To make things worse and put things into perspective, Russia is actually responsible for 40% of the natural gas the other European countries use, as well as 25% of their oil production goes to Europe. Now, that's definitely going to hit all of the financial markets. So you can see that all this is building up. You've got the inflation, the Great Recession on the rise, you've got interest rates, you've got job loss and all of this. So what are you supposed to do as an investor? The sky is falling. When the sky is falling is not the time to run. It's the time to get an umbrella. It's the time to pick and choose where you're going to invest in. So I'm going to give you a couple of pointers to utilize right now. Stay focused on your investment goals. If you have written goals and you have some things that you want to achieve, I realize that there's going to be a lot of lives affected, but you need to stay firm with your investment goals. You've got a written strategy. You worked hard for your money. You know that it's eventually going to affect things. So you want to be able to stick to your goals. A lot of people will indeed panic, but educate yourself with what's going on in the financial market. So stick to your written plan, educate yourself with what's going on in the financial market, and three, do not panic. Because if you panic, you might end up selling your real estate. You might end up selling your Bitcoin. You might end up selling your stocks. And those are not the things to do right now because as quickly as something goes up or down, you have to maintain the fact that there's going to be opportunity for you. So you might go a little bit more cash heavy or you might get ready because there's going to be a dip in the marketplace. And unfortunately, with all the things that are going on, a lot of companies, especially tech companies that are overblown and that have so much capital at their disposal, but they don't have enough profitability, that's going to be affected. Now will be the time for you to really get in there and start to buy things at a discount. Since I just talked about inflation, if you want to find out more about inflation and how it works, go ahead and watch this video.